Hi, my name is Jeff Pardo. I'm a songwriter and producer. I live in Nashville, Tennessee. Hi, I'm Aaron Roos. I am an engineer and producer, and I'm a Judson alumni, and I live in Algonquin. Still local. Let's talk about the relationship you guys had that spurned the record that was your first and how you did it here at Judson. So I met Aaron uh, when I was playing in a worship band at Springbrook Community Church out in Algonquin along with Dave Hunter and Josh Starr and um, I remember having a bunch of songs that I wanted to record because at the time I wanted to be an artist. And How old Aaron, were you at the time? Uh, I guess I was a junior in high school, so 17, 17, so a junior in yeah, high school. Yeah, so Stone Age. Right. Yeah, 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 back, yeah. <laughs> Aaron and Dave had this recording set up in their, um, in their dorm room, and so we started recording there. And this is where Aaron takes over the story. Yeah, so I was a musician. I thought I was a musician. And the idea of giving somebody else money for, the, for something that I thought I could do equally well or better, or eventually try to do equally well or better, uh, really rubbed me wrong. So I invested in some some state-of-the-art recording equipment. So at the time, the state-of-the-art recording equipment meant an eight-track digital recorder that recorded onto a zip disc. And if you don't know what a zip disc is, that means you're probably less than 28 years old. <laughs> but it held a whopping 100 meg of information, 100 megabytes of information on a disc about that size. Yeah. Kind of looked like a Pop-Tart. So yeah. I was in the record making business, <laughs> right. and and Jeff was one of the first guys that uh, volunteered his songs to uh, submit them to the process of recording them with with a college guy. Yeah, and where'd you record the record? In a, a, a conglomerate of Judson locations. So we did stuff in Aaron and Dave's dorm room. We did stuff in Aaron's apartment. We did stuff in Chapel. We might have done stuff in this building. Yeah, I, I don't, think we might use a piano the in the piano, maybe. building here. Uh, a nice Steinway It here was a lot of Judson. I mean, I spent, so basically I ended up spending, you know, two or three nights a week of my junior and senior year driving out, when I was junior and senior in high school, driving out to Judson to record yeah. with Aaron. I, mean, had I, old, I, I was out here a ton. You had the old white Corolla. Oh, yeah. It's and you Camry. ripped the back seat out of it or something? Ripped so the back seat that out. That way so you could get your in. keyboard into it? Yes. That was totally. hilarious. <laughs> uh, talk about now how that led to... Uh, working together today on this project. <clears throat> okay, so you fast forward 14 years, and I'd written a song with with Ben from Citizen Way for their first album, and we wrote a couple songs leading towards what's going to be the second album. And Ben called me after we wrote this first one that we're recording, called On My Side, and said, "Hey, I w I'd love to have you come to Chicago and record." up here, record the, the band up in Chicago, and uh, and I I remember when I first met Benny, he told me that he was basically best friends with Aaron Roos, and I thought, this is the smallest world. I mean, this is how and Dave Hunter. Even and Dave Hunter. Hunter. And Dave Hunter. And, I was like, and Josh Starr. Yeah, yeah like, like, you know, small, small, small world. So, um, we recorded, we did one day recording at Aaron's studio for this, these couple songs for the new Citizen Way record, and then we're here at Judson today um, doing guitar overdubs. But, I mean, I, I was just thinking, this is unbelievable. Like, I'm going to be, I'm 32 now, I'm going to be driving out to Judson College to make a record for somebody. Like, this is, this is it's crazy. Complete full circle. Small sort of world. Thing again, yeah. yeah. You guys were talking about the record that you made here in Wilson Hall. Wilson Hall. And yeah, the, somewhat the, the here end, at the Yeah, so the, let's see, Wilson Hall, first floor, end room at the very end of the hallway, it's kind of a bigger room, uh, Looks the windows look out onto the river. Mm -hmm. There's David Hunter, myself, and Josh Kirk, I mm. think was the third guy in the room. Uh, yes, that's and, right. And we had agreed to all three of us loft our beds, so build put the frame on a big two by four thing way up in the air. That way we'd have more floor space to put couches and a drum set under my bed. Set. <laughs> put mattresses around it and I'm like, trying to make this little dead space in a horrid working condition, <laughs> but <laughs> it totally, it worked, you know? Yeah. Was, I think we hung some microphones yep. from like the, from the, the bed, springs of the bed. And the, and the overhead mics were hanging down. <laughs> it was pretty, it was, pretty uh, awesome. There wasn't any room for any mic stands. Yeah, and then I think the second, 
there's a couple tracks where we cut drums in the chapel using the reverb of the chapel and really kind of utilizing the acoustic space that was in there. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously the pianos that are sitting around campus are really awesome instruments. And, uh, I, and I remember this too, valid. this is funny, when we were in the chapel, my brother, my younger brother played drums and we made a lot of music together growing up and he played on, on a number of these songs. But we, di we didn't have a click track. Oh no! So we didn't have a click track. So so Scott, so my brother, we 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 bought a metronome that had a blinking light. You could shut off the sound, and it had a blinking light. So he set it on the kick drum facing him, and and I, you know we played these songs in my basement. So I didn't have to play with him, and he knew what to play, you know. So he 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 puts the blinking metronome on his kick drum and plays the song top to bottom. Yep. Because we didn't have a click track, but yep. we knew like it, this tempo had to stay relatively steady, and yep. so he's playing along with this little blinking light for <laughs> the tempo. The it was world. unbelievable. I mean, with no no scratch track, no nothing. nothing. He was just, just playing drums, blind. and he knew all the fills because like when I was writing these songs at home, I'd be like, "Hey Scott, let's go count so measures for the next turn." <laughs> yeah, I mean, the whole thing was just you know we had no idea what we we're doing, but but honestly, that's how you learn sometimes. Yeah. Is you just you just well, what if we hmm, try this and, mm. and you learn to either do that again or not do that again? Or... It was a lot of self-taught kind of things, but then also being a member of, of a worship team at another local church and stuff like that. There's so much uh, influence that I was able to glean from from people that were a generation older than me, both like on the tech side, all the all the church volunteers and setting up. It was kind of, we were still in, th that church was still in a, st in a state where they were, <laughs> Uh, like the mobile church thing, you know, coming in on a trailer and setting everything up. So there's so much wealth of opportunity, setting everything up every week, helping out with that, ringing out the PA system, learning how to mic things up. I mean, it, it all kind of melded together to, into this like Judson experience for me. And uh, now that there's a program that's like officially kind of taking those type of learnings by the horns and, and really launching people into a in a professional career it, it's really inspiring to be able to come back and be a part of something that's yeah kind that of you a, help the, start. the next step of generation you know like the next generation uh next step of professionalism all that kind of stuff that and ben's done such an awesome job yeah. mm -hmm. championing that cause and everything but yeah it's and really cool you guys literally were some of the bedrock foundation of where this place got launched from you know, artists like you, and you know, we had the other bands, Barlow Grill, Super Check, even Church Rhythm were here right. for yep. a while. Yep. But you guys are here now, being a part of the new era of what Judson's doing. What advice, if you could... Citizen Way came out of here too, right? Citizen oh yeah. Here, right, yeah, this yeah. band. What, what piece of advice uh, would you give to a young student graduating from Judson in the Worship Arts program? you know, going into church ministry or just music in general, what would yeah. you say? Every opportunity you have is uh, a good one. You can't always create your own opportunities. People say you can, but you can't. But anytime I think there's a door open to you, you need to walk through it. You need to prepare to walk through that door well. Because uh, at least from, from my career so far, most of the time you really get, I mean, that's what a saying goes, like you get one chance to make a good first impression. And it's really true. You've got to you've got to do the work um, to be prepared for that door opening because that door will open mm -hmm. and if you walk through it well another door will open and if you walk through that one well another one will open mm -hmm. um, and if you don't walk through it well it's harder to get those doors to open again so I think you know work work hard and prepare well and and you know I think you'd be okay. Word of advice for future students or current students at, at Judson here. I, I think uh, echoing a lot of what, what Jeff said, the path that you set out to be on when you're young isn't necessarily the path that you're going to find yourself in or on uh, later in life. So um, have a plan for yourself, have ambitions, have goals and dreams, but be receptive to God's plan for your life no matter what that is. Um, and do your best to navigate that and um, answer those calls that he has on your life. Mm. Have you listened to the album? No! I mean, it's been a long time. I, I know. I mean, like, of course not. Why would you, you know? 
<laughs> I try to forget he has that I have right <laughs> Oh, what, what was that? But, you're right. Who was that? Well, earlier, one thing that was kind of fun to remember, we were talking about the, the, the recording and the mixing process, and being that we had the state-of-the-art piece of equipment that could record eight, eight tracks total, and we're trying to put drums and vocals and guitars and keyboards and bass. Well, if you had one mic for every of those inputs, you'd still trump eight. So part of the process was making mixing decisions early on and taking those six recorded tracks of drums or, or whatnot and recording them, like mixing them together and recording them onto two channels and then deleting yeah. the six channels to have, have six more left room. over. Have more room, yep. mm -hmm. Scary. Yeah. And I didn't realize how scary it was. Because, you know, I had to save our piece of equipment. And that's what you do. But, holy cow, what, what a cool kind of way to have to... To learn. Have to learn and to... Like, yeah, learn to make decisions early. And stick to your guns. Mm -hmm. And have a lot of foresight and vision for the for the production process and the creative process what the end result should sound like early on because uh, you have to make decisions that will definitely impact the final process the final product way early on, way earlier on than uh, I think most people are accustomed to anymore yeah, and yeah, that, that's obviously sure. that's the history of record making that mm -hmm. sort of process with tape and everything but um, I caught the tail end of that yeah you did those are fun memories for sure mm -hmm.